So today we finish the Ashtapadi. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we've done Nibruta de Kunja uh -huh. and we have done Pratama Samagama uh -huh. in the last class. Uh -huh. you, if you have any doubts or questions, you ask me and I would like to see you do the entire item after Today? That. Yes, today. You uh -huh. promised you'd practice and do it today, so yeah. Okay, I'll try. Mm. I'm just wondering uh, why you chose to not do Pratama Samagama right in the beginning and, and build it because that is the way the song starts actually. Of course, Nimruta Nikunja, she sets the, uh, she sets the situation uh, like the song starts and then she goes into Pratama Samagama. But we have uh, taken uh, Saki Keshi Matana as a, as a recurring line and building on that. Why exactly did we do that? No, because you know we could not have taken Nibruta Nikunja as the refrain. Right. Because she, is, if you can't go back, coming back, and you keep saying, "I was going in the forest. I was going in the forest." Okay. It, it's like a blank statement. Right. Right. We could not take the uh, statement after that. Huh. That Chakita Vilokita. I mean, I am alone over there. Or, what's the second line of Nibruta Nikunja? Uh, that is yeah, Chakita, Chakita Vilokita. Vilokita. I am alone over there, and I'm looking Sakala Disha Dishi. Mm -hmm. That, that, that won't work to come back to a refrain Correct. because here we right in the beginning we, we spoke about it we said it is Radha addressing her emotions to, to a Sakhi okay. or confiding in a Sakhi that this Haan. happened Haan. with that man all of you say that he's KC Madana and he's yeah. that he's this but he's not just that, you know, I've had a different kind of an experience with him. Right. And you know what happened with me. Right. So we've set the context, we could have set, set the context of it. Yeah, I think I've understood what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, so, so that is just why... I had a little doubt why we structured it like this. So that's why we thought that the Pallavi was a refrain mm -hmm. line. And now when we end, we won't do the Ankita. Ankita the in... The Sri Deva, the last... You know, mostly in uh, this Ashtapadi, if you do the Sri Jayadeva thing part of it, the Ankita mm -hmm. part of it, you will break the mood huh. of the song and the and the emotion of the song. Right. So normally I don't think any senior dancer would do the Ankita. Yes, youngsters do it, young right. gurus, young teachers teach but it's the youngsters. Better but to end with just the emotion of that whole yes. thing and in the context. In the context of, the of what because you've got to hold the emotion, no, right. ultimately. I leave the imagery of that Radha uh -huh. who is reminiscing about her first dalliance with Krishna uh -huh. in the audience. Yeah, because that so is the mood so that we then we come back to Sri Sri Jaya Jaya Deva is, yeah. oh. so Jaya Deva is written that and yeah, you know yeah, yeah, then yeah. we are doing it. Yeah, I think it's so It doesn't make sense. Yes, I mean it because it's, me. it also breaks the mood completely. Hmm. Completely breaks the mood. And whatever you've done until now becomes a waste. <laughs> because you don't leave the audience with that with image that. of Radha, right. uh, leaving them with the Shri Jayadeva, uh -huh. uh, the poets. Uh -huh. So no, I wouldn't do it. Okay. But s since you spoke about it, lots of poets have the Rankita line. Mm. Lots of poets. Mm. And sometimes, you know, when you want to show that it's been written by a poet, mm. there are some songs mm -hmm. where it's, it's in third person. Right. So you know that the poet has written it, hmm. and you want to establish the fact that that particular poet has written has it, written it. Has written it. Right. So what I do is I do the poet right from the beginning itself, uh -huh. as start having with him yeah start with the there. poet sitting, thinking about it, reminiscing. What should I write? Uh -huh. And then go into a flashback as to what he saw. And go jump into the song. Song, and, and then end with the song. Right. Not come back to the poet. Right. That's another way that you can treat. Even if you want to do Sakye, but Sri Jai Deva, if you start for Sakye, I don't think it makes sense. True. Uh, you know, because yeah, it no, 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 will it, it break the mood. It doesn't even st start the mood. Huh. I mean, it doesn't even give Philip to the mood. Yeah. A song like Jagadu huh. Everything is in third person. Yeah. It's a poet saying that uh, that the mother played with Krishna. Mm. She thought that this boy was uh, her son hmm. and she did, did not know that he, that he was, was actually the, the creator of the universe. Hmm. Hmm. So, but she behaved with him like an like ordinary a boy. Mother, right. 
and the whole song is in third person, hmm. told from a third person's point of view. As uh, the mother Yashoda did not know that Krishna was her child, and she played with him like you know without knowing that he was, he was the, the divine, the divine uh, you know creator hmm. himself. Hmm. So therefore, the poet is very important in that song, and in that kind of a song, I would start with the poet and show his learning over and, and what is he thinking, thinking what is his mind thinking and then go to the song you know so it makes sense but where the poet is not necessary so this is really up to the dancer to yes. choose how she will portray the poet or will she even bring no, him no but even look at the poet is, is it in first person is it in second person is it in third person huh. this particular song Sakhi mm -hmm. case is in first person she's actually addressing Sakhi correct it is not as if someone is saying that was Radha who addressed Saki. Uh -huh, then, yeah. you know, a past perfect so tense or past tense. to go yeah. with the song the, on the basis of how the song is structured. Yes, yes. So I would like you to do it. You know, the whole song. Hmm. We'll start with Pallavi, Anu Pallavi, then we go to Nibhuta Nikunja, hmm. and from there she come back to Saki. Hmm. As the Pallavi, hmm. and then the last uh, you can, you can do Pratama hmm. And leave the mood, come hmm. back to Saki, hmm. and say, All this happened then, hmm. and now I want him back in my life. Hmm. So, can you please go and get him? Hmm. Okay. okay? I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. Saki 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 Madana Mudar Saki Saki Madana Mudar Ramaya Maya Yeah. 
निभृत निकुंज ग्रह गतायानी रहे वसु निवृत निकु चकित सकल दिशा दिशी रति प्रभस भरे हस चकित विलोकित सकल दिशा दिशी रति प्रभस भरे हसत 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 प्रथम समागम लज्जित प्रथम समागम लज्जित 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 प्रथम समागम लज्जित पटु छाटु शतरु मृदु मधुरा भाषित शिथिल कृत जघन दुकूल मृदु मधुरा स्लिक भाषित शिथिल कृत जघन दुकूल 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 मदार मया मया सह मदन मनोरद भावित स्वीकार स्वीकार सखिए केशी मदन मुदार सखिए सखी सखी
I think I have to kind of um, forget myself more. Forget yourself completely, not more. More than what I did today. <laughs> completely. Yes. Because for, first thing about Abhinaya is you've you got to be unself-conscious. Ah, absolutely. Yeah, because I think today I was still preempting the song. Mm. So I think maybe I should just completely lose that. If you uh, hear the song huh. many times right. and you absorb the so meaning. I then think that's what they say. You need to practice it but yet not practice, practice it. Practice it, yes. Right? Yeah, so the, so the whole rasa of the song is uh, in you. Yes. The so you're able to just bring out it the more when you hear the, you know, the words. Yes. But you did a very good job. I mean, for whatever Thank you had <laughs> limited time that you had to practice. Doing this um, Ashtapadi, sometimes I feel um, this was written in the 12th century and today we are in the 21st century. There is a link because emotions don't change, love doesn't change, but yet we are not the same as women, as maybe somebody in that era would have been. How do you think there is a relevance and how do we actually connect this kind of a content, a context uh, to an audience today? Um, I have been asked this question many times as to how I would, uh, you know, being a woman of today, a feminist in my own right, how do I take to performing items mm -hmm. like this? Mm -hmm. But I think Radha was a feminist too. Mm. Because at her time, if you're talking about 12th century, whatever time she lived, much earlier than that, in um, Treta Yuga mm. or Dwapar Yuga, Dwapar Yuga, she had the courage at that time to, you know, to, to leave her husband for Krishna. Right. Or she was unabashed about expressing her, the intensity of her emotion for Krishna. Right. Obviously, if he's written that, right. let's let's for a moment think it's poetic imagination, uh -huh. and that it was Jayadeva who who wrote this. who wrote this. Even if we think that some people do say that, no, that Radha was a figment of Jayadeva's imagination, actually. But for a lot of people in Mathura, Vrindavan area, Radha is a reality uh -huh. because they you know address each other as Radhe Radhe. Uh -huh. They don't say Hare Krishna or something. Yeah. They say yeah. the, they even address of each other as Radhe Radhe. Mm -hmm. So they really do believe that Radha existed there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are not things that I want to go into. But for right. me, when I take a pick a poem, mm -hmm. Radha exists for me. Right. Okay, in my mind. Right. Because if I make her a figment of my imagination, then I can't pour all the emotions into her to make her a reality. It becomes really difficult. Right. Because okay, Radha existed. Uh -huh. Now that she existed, then what could her emotions have been? Uh -huh. And how can I pour my emotions into her to make her a living reality? today on stage, like uh -huh. to make her a living reality on stage right. is what I would treat it as. But yes, you know, like like people say, now emotions are timeless, mm -hmm. right? Of course. The expressions of it may vary. Right. They vary from society to society, mm -hmm. from culture, uh, to culture, yeah. culture to culture, from, you know, the background of education, the social kind of situation mm -hmm. that you are in, right. that you come from to another milieu that you come from. But the emotions don't change. Emotions are eternal and therefore long after I'm gone, it will still remain. I mean Radha's love for Krishna would perhaps still be depicted the way, hmm. you know, it, we've seen it depicted and the way I depict it. Hmm. But I do think that every dancer or yeah. every teacher brings her little individuality into, into that. that item while teaching, while performing. And that to me is that creative uh, individuality freedom. or freedom or whatever you want to call it, which, which is the base note of Bhattanatyam, mm -hmm. but the unnoticed base note of Bhattanatyam because mm -hmm. people don't actually notice it. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure if you see some other teacher doing, you know, this, this item, Nibhita Nikhaja, and then you compare it with, with the way that I have taught you mm -hmm. if, or what I have said about it, there will be a lot of difference right. in the treatment. So you think that freedom so, that we take in our own expression of it is what is going to make it relevant to the audience? To the audience, to my audience. I mean, right. I'm trying, I mean, being the kind of person that I am and coming from the background that I do, I feel this is the right thing for right. me. The, I, the manner of expression, the intensity and the way I would express it. 
I'm sure somebody, I mean, I, you know, uh, if uh, my teacher, my guru, Kalyanathi uh, Narayanan had, had done it, I'm sure she would have done it differently. Mm -hmm. um, a little differently, perhaps, not a lot, but she would have done it differently. And maybe her guru would have done it like, totally true. differently. So there is a change. Yes. There is a change. And that's why I think it's a dynamic evolving stuff. Yes. And it's not just a change. It's not just a generational change. Yeah. There's also a change between people, dancers and dancers and dancers. Um, I mean, you know, my, my own contemporaries, I'm sure, would treat this item differently. differently. Depending on the contextualization of the item and the situation that they are in, mm -hmm. you know, in their psychological or artistic or creative, uh, you know, mind moment. space uh -huh. or moment that they are in. So I don't say that this is right or that is wrong. But of course, like, you know, I, I tell people, you can't just pick the phone and say hi, or then you can't show someone saying texting message and say, yeah, I'm texting him a message and sending him an SMS. You yeah, know? you can't get that. That doesn't make that's, sense. Yeah, that's because we are, we are talking about classical poetry. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, right. we're not talking about something else. We're talking about a period, we're talking about classical poetry, we're talking about mythological characters who existed in a certain time. So do you think the very fact that we are doing it today is already making it that much relevant? I think so. I think everybody adds relevance to what you or you know she does mm -hmm. and the way you explain it also. And, and moreover, I, you know, like I said, emotions are timeless. But Pratima Samagama, if you say the first time I met him, I was shy, but, you know, I, you know, at my age, I mean, I'm saying, if I fell in love again, I would probably be a little shy. Mm -hmm. Not huge lot shy like I would have been when I was, you know, 16 or something and I fell in love for the first time, probably. Okay. But I would still have those little, because it depends on the characterization of the person. Mm -hmm. It's rather, you know, what kind of a woman is she? Mm -hmm. the, the woman continues to be the same woman for me, then even at age 80, she if her husband said something to her, she would probably Silly. do like, Come on, huh. you know, don't huh. do. or, or Krishna said something to her, she would say, you're joking or something, huh. Huh. you know? Like you see a lot so of people have it. that little, um, uh, you know, that love that continues right. beyond physical. True. Beyond physical. True. A relationship that continues beyond the physical. Right. And you show the same emotions. You, you yeah. show it, you know, and, said, and the, the, people at 80 can get bashful, why not rather <laughs> at 18. Right. Right? Yeah. And you're showing a character who's 18, or twenty, maybe we don't know, mm -hmm. and she's seeing this man, and for, she's experiencing the pangs of uh, yeah. love for the very first time, mm -hmm. and so you know her body and her mind is alive right. to receive that love and to give that love. Mm -hmm. so I think that point was very nice what you said about the character being the same at yeah. eighteen or eighty. Yeah, you know that, that the woman that she yeah, is, the woman that she is, is. Or the woman that I have made her to be in my mind, uh -huh. Uh -huh. which I think Jayadeva had thought of in uh -huh. his mind. Uh -huh. so I think personal right? interpretation goes a long, long way, way in yeah. the way we visualize yes. an Abhinaya piece. If somebody else who is reading the poetry thinks of Radha differently and for them Radha becomes a different character, mm -hmm. then there should be consistency in the way she would have treat her as at 18 or 80. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, if she's... Or even through the entire Ashtapadis. Yeah, yeah. Like, you yeah. know, from the start to the finish. Yeah. So, I think that... Well, because in the Ashtapadis, huh. you have to have a consistency in who she is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the bashful Radha to, to the... To the Swadina Patika. Yeah, to the Swadina Patika. She's not exactly bashful. She's saying Pratima Samagama. The very fact that she's able to narrate huh. this to a Sakhi huh. and say, yes, I felt Lajitaya. I did feel a little shy. Huh. But without stopping for a split second, he started talking mm -hmm. about so many things. I was so engrossed in his talk and I said, really? Oh, okay, okay. I didn't even realize that he was opening my garments uh -huh. and he was removing my garments. And before I knew, I was, you know, I had uh, succumbed to his charm. charm and our relationship had begun. So she's trying to say that. And that moment would remain the same. It, whether now or I think in the 22nd century or 23rd century, it would remain the same because it is that moment right. that we're trying to recapture. We're not trying to say what we are going through at our age. Right. Yeah. We're looking at the characterization of Radha and, and, and what she could have gone through at that moment. Yes. So if you if you develop her character and come to Kuru Yadurandana, for instance, she's a Swadina Patika in, in Kuru Yadurandana. She's not bashful or anything. Mm -hmm. At that time, she, they're so used to each other's bodies. 
and minds and souls so confident mm. of each other's of each love, other's love. love. I am so comfortable in right. each other's with each other's, you know, a physical and metaphysical being. Right. That they are able to merge into one. Right. And play around. Huh. And she's even able to tell him, do this for me, do that for me. Huh. Which probably even a married woman would not do. A married woman who's uh, had a 50-year marriage with her, right. uh, with with a husband that she didn't have this relationship with, right. may not, you yeah. know, feel comfortable talking about those things. Right. That Radha does in Kuru Yatara. So that's that's Radha. It's her character, you know. And I don't think there's uh, I, I, like I said, you have to. And she matures in this love, also, no, this, in the poetry. So to, to take it along there. Yeah. To take it to the height of Kuru Yatana. Yeah. I, step I step. do believe now, when I listen to all this that you're saying, you know, the Ashtapadi is probably really the ultimate piece of um, pinnacle of yeah, uh, erotic, uh, you know, love play between. Absolutely. Uh, between a man and a woman. And to be penned in poetry. To be penned in, in this manner in poetry. In fact, it was banned in the 17th century. It was banned? Yes, by a, somebody in Bombay. Oh my uh, God. You know, the Rasagangadana or some, some book he wrote and he banned it. And of course, British India didn't like it. I mean, you know, uh, they tried to ban it too because they didn't want erotic uh, poetry. Uh, poetry or dance or music. Uh, right. The Victorian, uh, you know, education yeah. or era would not allow this kind of eroticism right. in literature or poetry or uh, sculpture or uh, dance or you know anyway. So they did ban it, but I think um, you know it, it kind of came back mm -hmm. as a cultural renaissance because it's all the beauty of the poetry, right. and this kind of poetry is unparalleled in the world. Mm -hmm. And those who can understand Sanskrit and read Sanskrit would vouch for the fact that it's among the best of the best. Right. You know, anywhere in the world. Like, yeah. It's a cherished piece it's of cherished. choreography in any of Yeah, it is, it is. And I think across forms, yeah, yeah. not just a Bhartanatyam, uh, for a Bhartanatyam dancer, but a dancer of any classical uh, form right. should, should learn this. Right. If not for performance, at least for education. Right. To know how to deal with emotion right. and contextualize that emotion. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you.